heart-wrenching moments of truth. Don't let your printer run out of ink again. With the largest retail selection of ink and toner, Office Max has your ink. Get a $10 Office Max gift card when you buy $40 of national branded ink. Office Max. Work with us. Valid May 2nd through May 29th. Offer excludes Office Max private branded ink. Offer valid in store only. See store for details. Everybody's talking at me. Chuck Wilder here, the original talk back. By the way, our toll-free number, if you want to make a comment on this, 1-800-336-2225. 1-800-336-2225. My guest, Wes Vernon, talking about his article where he says, two events of the past uh, week or so have served as warnings to America to jealously guard your freedom of speech. The first event concerned the failed Times Square bomber. We'll talk about how they love to change uh, terminology and not use certain words and, oh, you know, like Islam, radical Islam, uh, it goes on and on. And the second is this one that we've been discussing, the move by the Federal Communications Commission to take one big giant step toward control of the Internet. Boy, they worry so much about the Internet, Wes. And before we uh, wrap up with your story, you remember when uh, when he put out on their internet uh, where you can more or less uh, uh, turn in your big your your neighbor if they didn't like health care and all that stuff? What was that called? Uh, oh oh yeah, if you see something fishy. Is yes, the word fishy. You, right, that's what it was. Yes. If you if you see something fishy on the internet, report to us. You know, I mean that sounds like uh, that's <laughs> you know <laughs> you could I mean you. you Visions of the, I hate to wear this out because it's said so often, but you could just, you have visions of, can you say Hitler? Can you say Stalin? Oh, can yeah. Stuff like that Dictator, coming? uh-huh. And then that really backfired on him, you know. It was like, oh, and here they are. They're trying to use the Internet to their advantage and, you know, just didn't quite work. And then they're going to have uh, on the uh, stimulus bill, they're going to post where all the money's gone. And that didn't work. That turned out to be a lie. They, remember they were reporting all those uh, districts in those right, states? 57 dis well, what was it? Uh, yeah, 112, districts? and they only had 40 districts? or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I was confused. 112 districts, 57 states. <laughs> yes, there you go. And it turned out they didn't have 57 states. They didn't have 112 districts. See, they. I guess they discovered that, you know, sometimes you get caught, it, like, if you lie, where's Wilson? If you lie, even on the Internet, Mr. President. All right. Now then, let's get to your, uh, we've talked about now they're going to change uh, and try to get back to, to this, uh, whatever it is, the uh, reclassification of the Internet there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you say, here is the bottom line problem. All right. We go back to the 60s, right? Right. From uh, From the days of the Kennedy assassination in the 60s, to today's Islamist-inspired terrorist attacks, the establishment media, as I say here, have shown a remarkable tendency to soft-pedal or excuse our enemies, but at the same time, demonizing conservative Americans or portraying middle America as the enemy. Uh, uh, we're talking, I guess, in large part to the Tea Party protest, but it can be anybody that contradicts the administration. Talk show hosts, for example. Now, mm -hmm. Chuck, you can take this to the bank. Had it not been shown that Lee Harvey Oswald had communist connections in 63 after the Kennedy assassination, or if he had not been nabbed quickly, it is not far-fetched to say that in the hysteria that was whipped up at the time, conservative leaders would have been rounded up on the basis of no evidence whatsoever just suspicion. And uh, today, the new media constitute the main impediment to a sustained official government crackdown on conservative dissent. And every, every would-be tyrant is hell-bent on control of the media. They see that as a key element in acquiring or maintaining power, and that is why it is essential <coughs> that an ever alert America resists such efforts at every turn. And you know, Wes, uh, when you think about the fairness doctrine, and uh, uh, it's it's like basically they have one 
television network that's challenging them. Uh, you right. know, they've got ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, they've got CNN, and all that we conservatives have is Fox. That's it. And yet, one against six or seven, and it just irks them to death. And then he declares war on Fox. I mean, boy, that was like uh, that was like Khrushchev taking his shoe off and hammering it on the on the table. You know what I mean? When he, yeah, well, he was so upset with Fox. That's right. And here's the way that they uh, did it. They went after Fox by first of all when the when the president decided that he would go uh, on the Sunday talk shows. He went on every network except Fox. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that didn't work. People, I think the public saw through that for being the pettiness that it was, and I think it probably hurt him more than it helped him. And then uh, when there was a case of having a pool service in the media, you know, where mm -hmm. in crowded uh, situations there was there's quite often the, the White House correspondents have one person, it, it could be any one of the major media, as the pool reporter, for that event and that all the other networks would participate and take reports from that pool reporter. Well, the Obama White House tried to block Fox from uh, being able to take that information, that the pool would not be directed to Fox. Mm -hmm. And this was one case where the rest of the media, the establishmentarian media, saw that, well, you know, that, I mean, that for once they were smart enough to connect the dots they said, well, if he can do it to Fox, he can do it to us whenever he's ticked off at us for some something or other. So they backed Fox, and the Obama administration backed down. And then, of course, there's the situation with Glenn Beck, who mm -hmm. is very innovative in uh, where he dares to go. He goes into a lot of uh, very sensitive and touchy things with this administration. And he has, they have gone to the point of some of the people in his White House, Van Jones, for example, a communist, was his green czar for a while, and uh, Beck uh, exposed him as a communist. And so they retaliated some outfit that, I, I don't remember the name of the outfit, some organization with which Van Jones was affiliated, brought pressure to bear on Fox, on Fox advertisers to withdraw their ads from the Glenn Beck show. Mm -hmm. And, well, that didn't stop uh, Glenn Beck, and uh, Van Jones ended up resigning. But don't worry, he's still there in some consultative uh, <laughs> position. So, I mean, you know, and now they're trying to obliterate the Internet. The Internet is like the Wild West, and frankly, that's what it should be.